So I spent the better part of my weekend struggling to run machine learning models in Unity with Barracuda. So I thought I would make this video to help you guys out. Maybe there's a couple things that uh, I can tell you that might make things a little bit easier for you. So this video is not gonna be a tutorial, but I'm just gonna run through how I got an image classification model running in Unity with uh, their Barracuda inference engine. Okay, so first things first, I'm just gonna do like a high level overview of what all's going on here. So. Um, before, I don't know if you've ever seen my previous video where I was running machine learning models in Unity, we were using TensorFlow Sharp, which was what uh, Unity's ML agents was running on, okay? Since then, they've created their own inference engine called Barracuda. This is now what ML agents runs on. But as an extra feature to this, you can also run other machine learning models in Barracuda that were created outside of Unity with nothing to do with Unity's ML agents. Those models have to be in Onyx format. So Onyx format is, Open Neural Network Exchange. It's just an open format for machine learning models. Now, to get an Onyx model, you can convert TensorFlow models, PyTorch models, Keras models, all those to Onyx format. Now, you can't run any Onyx model in Unity. Uh, you can only run what's under their supported uh, architecture. So here you can see Tiny YOLO for object detection, MobileNet image classifiers, fully convolutional models, fully dense models, blah, blah, blah. If you go to this uh, Onyx model zoo, a lot of these models here you can run in Unity, but I only did a simple one for today because um, I didn't want to deal with like complicated outputs like I dealt with um, object detection bounding boxes and that's kind of a headache. So I wanted to stick with something something simple for today. So what I ran was this Efficient Net Light 4. So if we click here, we can get more details about this model and we can download all the necessary files. So here you can download the model and then if you go up into dependencies, you'll also need the label map file. Okay, so a couple things to note here are the uh, pre-processing steps and the post-processing steps. Now this particular model actually does a good job of laying out exactly what's required. If you click on some of those other models in the model zoo, uh, you may have to do a little bit of investigating to find out exactly what they expect and how you can handle the output. But for example, here, you'll notice that it wants a image in the dimensions 224 by 224. So notice that's square dimensions, which is not gonna match any camera input that we're gonna be able to give it. So we're gonna have to actually crop our camera image to square dimensions. And then you can see here, this line converts pixel values from zero to 255 to negative one to one. So you know that's not like naturally occurring pixel values in Unity. We're actually gonna have to convert our pixel values from whatever we use to negative one to one. So if we head over to Unity, you can just drag that uh, Onyx model file in that you downloaded and drag in that label maps text file. So if you click on the model file in the inspector, you'll see that uh, this is kind of like a, uh, like a Netron. It'll give you the input and output shapes and uh, you know what it expects and everything. So you can see here, uh, input tensor name is images and it wants uh, 224 by 224 images with three channels. Okay, so the first thing that I have here is a canvas with UI raw image and an aspect ratio fitter. So if we go to this uh, camera view script, you can see that it just gets the webcam texture, sets it to this raw image, and then uh, sets the aspect ratio of the fitter to that of the webcam texture. Okay, so the next part of this project is this inference object. This has a pre-processing script, which we'll talk about in a minute, and this classification script. So this is what is going to actually run this classification model. So if we open this up, you'll see that uh, first thing you need to do in the start function, we will uh, load the model file and then we'll create a worker with that model file. The next thing we need to do is load those labels into memory so that we can query them later. Uh, now the label file, if you open it, is not in a very Unity friendly format. So there was not an easy way I could like use the JSON utility and load this or anything like that. So I just split it by quotations and then I uh, grabbed every other uh, item in that split array and added it to the label map file. So the result is we ha now have a string array of all 1000 labels. Now, the next thing you'll notice is in the update function, we grab the webcam texture from our camera view script. And then every time the webcam texture updates, we run a pre-processing script to get our image ready to run through this model. Now, so if you remember before, the pre-processing steps for this particular model was we needed to crop it to square dimensions, 224 by 224, and then we need our pixel values to go from negative one to one. So there are many ways in Unity to like scale and crop an image. 
Uh, none of which are super performant, so that's why I made this pre-processed script. I think before, in my older TensorFlow Sharp videos, we did all of the pre-processing like on the CPU and it halted everything. And like, say you wanted to crop the image and then you wanted to scale the image. You'd have to do like a texture.apply in between there and that is going to cause some big performance hits. So what's come out since then is this uh, async GPU readback request. So here what we can do is a graphics.blit from the webcam texture to a render texture, but we can give the render texture a scale and offset that will handle the cropping of the image. And then when we create the render texture, we can just uh, give it a desired size, which in our case is 224 by 224. And then the um, downsizing will occur when we do this graphics.blit as well. And then we do this async GPU readback request, which um, when this is complete, this gives us uh, the pixels of the image, which we can then uh, deal with according to the specifications of our model. So back here in our classification script, you can see that the preprocess function has a callback, which is run models. So we get the pixels from that readback request. And then we have to do our final preprocessing step, which is doing this uh, transformation of the pixels. So, so down here, we have to convert our pixels from zero to 255 to negative one to one. So if we go back to that um, model, you can see that when they do the conversion, they are subtracting 127 from the pixels and then dividing by 128. So all we have to do is just do that for each pixel. And then we have our input tensor for our model. Okay, so then we just have to execute the model and we get our output tensor. Pretty much the way it works is there's a thousand labels in that text file. The output tensor just gives you uh, a thousand floats that are in the same order as that text file. The higher the float, the higher the probability of that label being in the image. That's all you really need to do to get uh, this classification model running. So if you can see here, it works pretty well. Like we can get water bottle, we can get wine bottle. Oh, beer glass. Oh, there's wine bottle. There we go. So yeah, it works pretty well. I think like the inference time seems to be pretty quick. The frame rate uh, running here is pretty good. Uh, I just looked at the frame rate and I was like, oh my God, 20 FPS, but it's because I'm screen recording. Uh, the one other thing that I did try to run in here and I was unsuccessful today was this um, like emotions uh, Onyx model where it's supposed to detect like one of eight uh, emotions of a person. So it's this FER plus emotion recognition. I tried to run this and I, honestly, I spent like, I don't know, hours playing around with this today trying to figure out why it wasn't working. And then when I ran this demo in my browser, I noticed that the model itself just doesn't really work very well. Like it gets happiness, but then, I don't know. I'm gonna look really stupid here, but I can't get it to do anger. Or I don't know. I, I can't get it to work very well. Um, maybe somebody else can figure this out, but I did put that in here. If you look on this, like um, there's this emotion script. The transform input is a little bit different. This one, wanted you to have uh, a single channel grayscale image. So it's possible that I did this conversion wrong. Not really sure to be honest. Oh yeah, so one thing I did forget to mention is that uh, you can use compute shaders to do a lot of the stuff that we just did. I did not do that in this video because compute shaders on Android, you can only run them with Vulkan and uh, AR Foundation cannot use Vulkan yet. So I, don't, I didn't think that it made sense to do that in the context of this YouTube channel since we do mainly AR stuff, but uh, yeah, if you guys wanna do the next video with compute shaders, we can do that. Otherwise, I was thinking maybe we get object detection to run or some other interesting machine learning model, or maybe um, I can do some research and try to figure out how to export uh, from TensorFlow or PyTorch uh, to an Onyx model that will actually run in Unity and um, help you guys out with that, I don't know. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. And with that, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.